Hello class, how are you all today? I trust that you are all fine and ready for today's lecture. Today we shall continue with our lecture series. You remember last week we dealt with um, chronic periodontitis and we mentioned that chronic periodontitis has some clinical features. These clinical features include periodontal pocket, gingival recession, alveolar bone loss and many others. Today's topic is periodontal pockets. I hope you all enjoy it. The objective of this lecture, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define periodontal pocket, classify periodontal pocket, identify the symptoms of periodontal pocket. By way of introduction, I want to talk on gingival sulcus. The gingival sulcus is the space between the free gingiva and the tooth. The base of this sulcus is formed by the junctional epithelium. It's a V-shaped shallow space around the tooth. It is between 0.5 to 3 mm deep. The depth is measured with a periodontal probe. Yes, this diagram shows the gingival sulcus. You can see the dental enamel, the sulcus itself, the base of which is the junctional epithelium, that's the blue area. The gray area is the gingival, is the gingiva, yes, is the gingiva. And it forms the outer wall of this sulcus. The sulcus itself is, you can see, is a V-shaped shallow space. Then you have the gingival attachment. This gingival attachment consists of the gingival fibers and the gingival bundle. And below it, we have the alveolar bone. Ah, you'll be conversant with this diagram. I could remember bringing it up as one of the diagrams when it had to do with, um, when we had to talk on chronic periodontitis. It's something you should always keep in mind. Yes, outline. We discussed outline on the one. Definition. Two, classification. 3 pathogenesis, 4 pocket content, diagnosis, and under diagnosis we want to talk of symptoms, we want to talk of signs, then we go to treatment, then we conclude. Good. Yes, a pathological uh, periodontal pocket could be defined as a pathologically different gingival sulcus. And then um, the different gingival sulcus may occur corona to the gingival margin or apical to the gingival margin. You can see this diagram. You see the healthy tooth gum area. Here we find that that our the gum fits snugly around the neck of the tooth, like the total neck of of uh, total neck of a shape that will fit around the neck. And you can see the other side the, where we have the infected tooth or gum. You can see um, bacteria plaque and you can now see the periodontal pocket deepening. It's pathological. When we look at the healthy part, there's nothing like that. So this is what we call the pathological pocket. Can be classified, the main pockets can be classified as gingival pocket or periodontal pocket. The gingival pocket, from this we can see that it's called a false pocket. It can only be seen in gingivitis. Gingivitis, you know, is the, the part, the type of periodontal disease. And it does not cause the um, destruction of the underlying periodontal tissues. And the sulcus is deepened in gingival pocket due to the increase in the bulk of the gingiva. Unlike in periodontal pocket, where we have the suprabony pocket and the infrabony pocket, it's um, known as a true pocket. It is seen, I told you, is a feature of chronic periodontitis and it involves the destruction of the periodontal ligaments. The suprabony pocket, we find out, let's go to the slide. This is the, a feature of the, a picture of the gingival pocket. B is the feature of the suprabony pocket. You find that that here in the suprabony pocket, the base of this pocket is corona, it's above the underlying alveolar bone. While in the infrabony pocket, the base is it's, um, inferior to the 
alveolar bone and it's apical i mean to the alveolar bone and the walls of this pocket in the supraboni pocket is formed by the soft tissue while the walls of the infraboni pocket is formed by both the wall the soft tissue and the bone the aerodontal pocket can also be classified according to the, the surfaces of the tooth involved in the simple is only about is the face a, a, a surface that is involved in compound you have two surfaces involved while in the spiral you have more than two surfaces involved then can also be classified according to how the soft wall of the pocket is it could be fibrous per, uh, pocket wall or the matos pocket yes the pathogenesis how did we come about this periodontal pocket the transformation of the gingival surface into the periodontal pocket well there's if you look at this diagram you see plaque accumulation it means that plaque could accumulate at the gingival margin and this plaque accumulation over time will lead to gingival inflammation which leads us to gingival pocket if nothing is done to it if nothing is done to it it moves ahead the bacteria in the plaque have a way of um, destroying the junctional epithelium and we move down to the peri peri epical area to the, to the uh, periodontial periodontium move into the periodontium and then leads to pocket formation the area is so difficult to clean out you can't use your brush to clean it out and if it's left not taken care of you go back to this circle there will be increased plaque accumulation and increased plaque accumulation will now lead to increase uh, the bone and the uh, periodontium destruction and like that and like that over and over yes symptoms when the patient comes to you what will this patient complain of one that there's localized pain pain and sensation of pressure after eating mm -hmm. they will actually they will complain of foul taste in that area that their mouth is always smelly in that area there's tendency for them to suck out mm -hmm, from those areas there's pain ah, radiating pain deep into the bone then there's this feeling as if you should just itch the gob that's why you find a lot of them holding on to toothpick then this the same toothpick they will now have to dig it inside or because they have that urge then they'll complain of teeth of food sticking in between their teeth they will not tell you that they have a hole between their teeth it will be very sensitive they complain of sensitivity to hot or cold they tell you everything they eat is sensitive and they will tell you they have, have toothache they know that they, they don't have caries but they don't know why they have this oh science that i told you you to you as the clinician you might perceive the bad breath the halitosis yeah definitely you see bleeding after breathing the gum will be red and so like oh well you could see circulation that's false formation you might not but it could be the tender and might not be tender if you look at this picture i have here you will see my food going in there you see the gingiva red and swollen as if it's going to burst anytime from now you know, the pocket the probe is inside that pocket we use the probe to measure the depth of the pocket around the throat we want to determine the, the uh, pocket depth and actually determine that this person has periodontal disease we take radiograph although um soft tissue will not show on radio that but we are looking out for the pattern of bone loss we want to know if it's horizontal bone loss or if it's angular bone loss yes we want to treat this patient the treatment is both non-surgical that includes our scaling and polishing Actually, when you do your scaling and polishing you are ex you expect this to heal especially if and you don't have um you don't want to have any other uh, management if there's no bone loss but if there's bone loss that's when 
you now go for the surgical management it means you open up that area you give the patient an anesthesia you now open up you just do something surgical you open up that area and clean it out now i i drew up the table for us for you here to see the supra bony pocket and the infra bony pocket and note the difference between the two like i mentioned that the supra bony pocket the base of the pocket is grown out to the alveolar bone and that the pattern of bone loss is horizontal while for the infra bony pocket the base of the pocket is apical to the alveolar crest and the pattern of bone loss is vertical that's the same thing Yes, we can easily conclude and say we were able to identify define periodontal pocket yes we classified periodontal pocket and we identified the symptoms of periodontal pocket good i want you to read up for next week gingival recession and you remember is one of the clinical features of chronic periodontitis and we have said we'll mention it too so for now let's keep it bye for now